what's up guys welcome back to lion mark tv mark here with another exciting delighting and much interesting video here on the channel um this one is from about p2b recently um an interview on rice tv stated about him you know and the INEC, uh, the apc uh, party trying to you know manipulate his um campaign uh outside nigeria as a means of going there to seek for funding for uh, the campaign here anyway he was in london and this is the highlights don't forget to subscribe drop a comment gentlemen below. i think you might have noticed that he's here yeah 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 y
every administrator will have his critics or her critics. But what we can say for certain is that by the time he ended his tenure, he left the state better than he met it. I am not his spokesman. Thank you. I am not a member of his party. But then, I am a Nigerian. I am a citizen of Anambra State. But then, Mr. Obi is not here to trumpet the Anambra message. Nigeria consists of more than just Anambra State. So it poses greater challenges. Challenges that he has presented himself to confront. Challenges that confront every Nigerian. Over 200 million people needing an answer. Needing an answer because certainly we cannot continue the way we are at present. We just cannot continue. Mr. Obi, if you're still here, <laughs> Your Excellency, I know you're in demand, but we're going to have to. There's a room full of close to 400 people who have come here to hear your message. Mr. Bill, I my questions to him are going to be very simple. You've got a mountain to climb. What are you offering? Before you can solve a problem, you have to know what the problem is. You have to know the parameters of the problem. So I hope that Mr. Obi shall be considering that because of telling us that we know what we confront on a micro basis, on a macro basis in the he will tell us what his plan is. Many of you here are undecided voters. Many of you know, many of you are you have any right to vote. When I don't finish, she has a fit talk. Well, whether you understand it or not, it is. Can I finish? Thank you. Mr. Obi will tell us what his plans are. Mr. Obi will show us the way forward. Once it, if you are not convinced, if you were not convinced before, it is his duty to convince us. And I know that he will. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Peter Gregory Obi, Commander of the Order of Nigeria. Nigerians outside Nigeria, 
who is still in Mary? <laughs>
time we arrived here. And now it become a mess. When we are busy selecting our leaders based on primordial reasons. Okay, Religion, my tongue, connection. And when we arrive at this junction, I like I to tell people everywhere I go, tell me who is better off for it. Today, the president is from the north. Is the north safe? No. no. Do they have uncounted electricity? No. no. Do they buy bread cheaper? No. no. So, what was the reason for my tongue? <laughs> what did they pay feed because of their tongue? Because if bread was cheaper, we go there and buy it and come. Go to the southwest. Is anything cheaper? No. And people say no. You go to the southeast. It is the same thing. So there's nobody. You can't go from today from Abuja. To Kaduna by the road. You can't go by air, you can't go by train. I went to Kastuna campaign and I was being really warned that I have to be careful. I was almost in a tank. <laughs> but that's where the president comes from. So what is happening here? Everywhere is the same thing. People are suffering there, they don't have jobs, they don't have anything. Some of you left because it wasn't working. Definitely. There are people who left when one pound was one naira. Yeah. There are people who left when it was two, three, four. Now we get hundred. Look at that. Look at Yes, I got And I can say it. You are not better off. Your situation is double one. Those who are there know you're already in the problem. But you who even run out here thinking you're safe, your situation is bad. Because you have become the social welfare, the doctor, the general director. So those there, every morning you receive their calls. Let me his problem. Yes. All right. Are you back at them? No. So your situation is equally bad. Because you'll be asking, how are you? Well, I tell you, oh, you this one you have jumped into a well. You're not one I tell you. No, no, this is it. You're not one. Where are you working with the pursuit? Because people can be too well and you're happy. No. So you have a problem. So six minutes. The problem with yes. Because if it's working, look at that peace. Yeah. If it's working, it can be rest short. Nigeria is used to what you used to hear in the past. Oh, we are coming for holidays. Oh, we are coming for. So you see them and you're happy. But now, <laughs> even to go and bury the night, if you go, you bring one because you go by a soup now. The last day I went, the children of the person went to soup. I was the only person so can be present.
criminalized by those who are supposed to deal with it. Then nobody gives you any excuse. It is only in Nigeria that I know today that kidnappers will kidnap you. Before you are able to bring money. So they have food. If you are sick, they bring daughter to treat you. <laughs> Tell your people where to keep the money. But police don't know where they are. <laughs> but they have food. And when they will keep the money, they know. Everybody knows where they will keep the money. But nobody arrests them. Because nobody knows where they are. They know. They know. We only come to today where our only our major means of any foreign exchange of oil is a good chunk of our resources comes from foreign and it comes from oil. True. We are the only open country that is not producing its quota apart from Venezuela because of sanctions. Every other OPEC country is asking to produce more because of high oil price. Today, the country cannot produce this food because all the oil is stolen. Oil is not sweet. You put it in your pocket. <laughs> For you to steal oil, a vessel must come into your territory. Yes. Navy must approve the vessel. Of course. You can't put it inside the pocket. Exactly. And nobody cares in a country that is collapsed with death. In July, in fact, some people are telling me like what? In, from, in July alone, our open order, everybody knows, is 1.8 million barrels. Throughout the month of July, our average production was 1 million in the trade. So every day we lost 717 million barrels. If you multiply it, you're going to get about 2 million, 227 barrels. That's what we lost. And an average of 110 million dollars, we lost about 2 billion, 400. $5 million multiplied by the rate of exchange. If we use their rate, 410, use of black market rate, which is the official rate, 610. If you have two, 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 two of them and divide it by two, two of them is 1,100. Divide it by 550, multiplied by the money we lost. We lost about one, one trillion, 344 billion. In one word, for a country where we are in the mess and total earning from January 1 this year to April 30 this year was 1 trillion 630 billion naira. Our expenditure, <laughs> our expenditure within that period is 4 trillion. 720 billion. So we have a deficit of 3 trillion 100 billion. Give me a list, I'll show you from NPS. That is the amount. So look at, this, look at the amount of deficit we have. Look at the amount of deficit we have. In four, in four months, 3 trillion 100 billion. Even our debt service within that period have now moved to 1 trillion, 940 billion. It was 310 billion more. And yet, 310 billion more. And yet, we are losing this amount every month in stolen money. And nobody cares. And they say, oh, all it is being stolen. By who? How? And it goes on and on. You see the rascality that is everywhere. And nobody cares. 
Nobody cares. Nobody bothers. The amount we lost in one month is enough to settle all the as for well everybody is looking for. And they go back to school. And all they ask is fix the school infrastructure. Make the place conducive for education. In a place that is celebrated and has the Julia and pass through that system that has been celebrated all over the world. So all we ask is, my dear people, let us join her and stop all this. This is a country that has so much potential. Let us move this country. This is the money we are losing, the money we borrowed. Nobody is asking, how do we come to where the money we borrowed can no longer service our debt? Can, can no longer service our debt? Every other country has borrowed money, every other country is owing. But the average debt servicing constitutes about maximum 25% of their debt, of their budget. In our own, it's impossible. Next year, you have seen next year presentation of our budget. We have a budget of about 20 trillion. We're going to borrow 12. <laughs> because we're sharing country. Nobody's producing anything. The entire country is not producing anything. All we do is share the little thing we have. And nobody cares. So I'm begging Nigerians to come. Let us take back our country. Thank you. 
and I can't tell you today, is not by your father. So there's something that if you go and say to them, okay, you must pay something. They have something somewhere they can give you some more. I told him that if the man who were all comes, because I was going to run away. He's not there. It's a story. And that is a challenge in face. So we need to start with the maximum. Mm -hmm. So what I'm here this evening is to have an interaction with people because I'm sure you have a few advices, I have a few learning points, and I have a few things. And then we will conclude by saying, let us not look at it. Don't look at it that, oh, Peter Blue wants to be president, or this person wants to be this, or this person wants to be this. No, it's not going to work. This time around, we're not going to vote anybody in. So we're going to start answering his excellency again. Mm -hmm. Excellency, distinguished honorable, has to be removed from my experience in now. Let's get together and stop 
this situation. I take questions. Thank you and God bless you. Now, um, let me start with um, you, sir. Um, we're just going to bring the microphone to you. I'd like you to tell us your name and your question, but please keep it as brief as possible because we've got a full house. Yeah? Keep your questions brief. Thank you. Thank you very much. We so much appreciate you, His Excellency. Um, I'm going to remove his now, but we start with that from the president of the late straight away. Thank you. Uh, we're glad to have you. My, my name is Dr. Mike Mutuki Jeku. Um, I'm an expert of sustainable development, teaching students at the university. I'm um, an architect and professional in um, the coordinator of Rescue Nigeria. And also, <laughs> the question is. Quiet, he can ask his question. Thank you. The question is, thank you very much. Thank you very much. When you get a little country, you do your best. His Excellency, um, having referred to many countries, and you made a very strong point. You see, things are happening, and the people doing this, they have fun still with countries who they are. Is there any way we want to employ some digital surveillance and technology in monitoring activities in Nigeria? For example, in Abadevi, if anybody makes a call, you will know who made the call at the time you made the call. And we can use it to trace. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
give the entire security application. The point is that, those in the don't have machine, you know, they have all those things today. Everything is there. I don't want to say anything. Why can't we have state police? The reason that people don't want to, they know that if you put all this in place, there will be security. As someone who have community police, I paid every community security system for my office. Bought every community vehicle for security. Why can't we do for the nation? That's simple. As I can see. I'm not saying you're going to solve it overnight, but it's something you can tackle head on. If all in Washington, in New York, yesterday, somebody asked me, he said, Ms. Manibo will send me this. And he said that you said she should not have secreted that. I said, yes. She wrote a beautiful article. Stinginess as a brilliant strategy. <laughs> About being stingy until I started using the money to pay off gratuity, pension, everything. And he started asking me, Where are you getting the money? I said, It was not going to that cut off. So we're using properly. That's what we use to fund the education. That's how we move education from the six number one. Okay, so the question is, um, what are you going to do about this immigration in regards to the Chinese that are coming to the country? They set up a manufacturing facilities all over the place and they don't employ fellow Nigerians, they just keep it to themselves and they do a lot of illegal stuff. So they come in, contain loads of um, container loads come in with the immigrants of Chinese. What are you going to do about that? Let me tell you, 
after this announcement, it will be Those who think about yesterday and today will miss more. I'm not going to spend my energy looking for them. We put a system that will help us to find out what happened in the past. And if we do, I'm telling you, if we do, we'll find out whether there's anything we can do for it. You are just chasing people and wasting everybody's time. If they are taking that money, we are talking about poverty. If they are taking that money, if they are taking from $90 billion that they borrowed and decided to fight to deal with power for $15 billion, Nigeria that is generating today. We need to stop it. I was going on in 